everybody, and welcome to New Consciousness Review. I'm Miriam Knight, and our guest today is Diane Collins, the author of the highly acclaimed new book, Do You Quantum Think? New Thinking That Will Rock Your World. A former Fortune 100 corporate manager, Diane is a much sought-after speaker and consultant to business executives and entrepreneurs around the world. She has an extraordinary gift of originality and the ability to express complex universal subjects in clear and powerful ways that people can instantly resonate with. Her quantum think system is an original synthesis of knowledge based in the principles of quantum science and universal laws applied as practical wisdom in all areas of life. Diane has degrees in philosophy and psychology and is a lifelong student of numerous leading edge modalities and models that make life better and more joyful. Diane, I am so delighted to have you with us today. Welcome. Thank you so much, Miriam. It's my pleasure, completely. (laughs) Diane, you have taken an incredibly wide range of philosophies about how the world works, from ancient to ultra-modern, and woven them together into a coherent body of integrated wisdom that actually makes sense. I'm frankly amazed at the scope of your book. How did you come to develop Quantum Think? I think it started <laughs> way back when. I'll try to make this story, uh, you know, in quantum leap style. When I was about four, literally, uh, I started to question what is existence. I looked at myself at that point as an object, and I and I really was born to question. I think, and I know, in fact, that. You know, this really has to do with my soul's purpose. So as I reached teenage, I really started to read a lot of philosophy and Eastern philosophy because it was about the time of the Vietnam War. And I remember reading an article uh, by one of the soldiers who had returned, and it just penetrated me to such a degree that I thought there's something wrong with this picture, that we're in this incredibly beautiful, magnificent universe, a wonderful planet. Uh, It seemed to me at the time that we could choose what we wanted and what we didn't want as people, as a humanity. And yet we had an entire industry built around mass-producing weaponry to kill one another in mass and then justifying it by calling it, you know, well, we have to protect ourselves. I'm not saying we don't, but it just seemed to me at a, at a level of consciousness that there was a disconnect here between who we could become as a humanity and who we were actually playing out to be, really from the beginning of time, as you know, Miriam, that there's always been conflict and uh, that warlike expression going on, or at least as far as we know in historical records. So to me at the time, as a teenager, I thought, how could I possibly make a difference in the world? And, you know, when you're that age, you start to think, well, how can I make a difference in the world in general? Mm -hmm. And then it occurred to me that what I did have complete jurisdiction over was the ability to evolve my own state, my own awareness, my own consciousness. And that's really where it began. And uh, as I went along, I, you know, I don't want to get too much into the detail of it, but I really had a dream that sometime I would be able to produce a television series because I love entertainment Mm -hmm. and media. (laughs) I love being here with you and your listeners. So I had this dream to produce a television series that would transform consciousness as you watch, that would awaken awareness, that would shake us free of the kind of conditioning 
that it seemed we were all subjected to at that point. And so I, I just kept going and, you know, one thing lead, led to another and I studied philosophy in school and then I had a double major in psychology and at the time they didn't have consciousness studies per se. So that was about the closest I could get to it, although I knew that wasn't it either. And then what happened is I came across Fritjof Capra's book, The Tao of Physics. Oh. And for me, that was, you know, I had already been studying uh, the yogic traditions and, and the Vedanta uh, literature. So when I came across the Tao of Physics, it seemed to me, wow, this is how you could get across to people is because science had become a kind of God in our culture that if you could start to relate the wisdom, the universal wisdom, through the lens of science, that it could include more people and to do it in an entertaining way. So eventually, and then as you, as you said in, in uh, the very kind introduction that you gave of me, Somehow I, I ended up working in a corporation and in management. And so now that I look at it from a quantum think perspective, and quantum think is a system of principles, of distinctions in new thinking, 21 plus 1 as I call them, that put this all together, you know, like how do you put it all together? Being able to think from quantum principles, being able to think from spiritual wisdom, being able to apply it in a practical way. Well, one of the distinctions called the holo movement of purpose had me eventually see that all of these different life occurrences when you view them like a novel, like a great novel that everyone's life is, as one whole story with nothing missing and nothing left out, what I started to glean was that I was trained by infinite intelligence, as we all are, like that little tap on the shoulder, here, go here, philosophy, here, go here, corporate experience, here, go here, go there, science, spirituality, and started to see that everything that I was led to do that was like a soul's journey enabled me to put the whole system together so mm -hmm. that other people can read the book and grasp not just understand it, not just know it, because all the wisdom is available, as you know, everywhere, as I say, you know, and that was how I ended up. The main question was, with all the wisdom available, 6,000 years or plus more of it, at the touch of a smartphone, how is it we're still not living it? And that is really what led me to develop the system. Wow. Diane, you have to take a breath every so often so I can come in. I know. <laughs> it was a big question. So. <laughs> right. Let me sit and relax. You, you remind me of, of a couple of things. One, one is a, a phrase I heard once that um, anyone who is not a communist before age 20 has no heart. And everyone who is a communist after age 20 has no brain. <laughs> It's like uh, we all have to go through this evolution of spirit. And I, I just loved what you said about everything that happens in your life is part of the development of the human being you are. And, it, and when you get the right perspective, you can see how it all fits in. That's what I love so much about your book. It it kind of keeps on coming around in spirals and each iteration of the concepts that you bring uh, forces it in deeper and connects it more and more to your own experience. So 
tell us, may, maybe if you can, just on the, the tip of a spoon, what are the essential principles of quantum thinking? 